On Tuesday, we started talking about optimization um, of circuits. We talked about how we um, optimize for two levels um, implementation using Karna maps and how easy it is to use Karna maps and you can get really um, um, really good results in a predictive way. You know you've got, you came to the um, most optimized function. Um, then we talked about multi-level optimization. We said, we said um, you c we have some trade-off between um, how many levels. So the more levels you have, the more propagation that you introduce in the circuit. Um, so in a way, it will be slower, but it might take less space um, on the chip and less power and so on. Um, and we introduced a couple of methods of how you go about um, converting from a two-level design into a multiple-level design. Now, what we're going to do in today's lecture, um, moving on from um, the optimization topics, we're going to introduce a few new gate types. Um, and we'll see why we, we need those kind of gates and what's, what are their properties. The first one we'll talk about is the NAND gate. The NAND gate um, is just an end with its output inverted. Um, it is represented in this form there. Now, it looks just like a usual um, end gate, but you've got this inversion bubble um, at the output. So this implies that X and Y are ended together in a normal way, and then the result is being inverted. So the truth table for the NAND gate is in fact the inverse of the truth table of the end gate. If you remember, um, the truth table for an end gate will just be 0, 0, zero 1. Um, so this is just the complete opposite. Now, uh, for an NAND gate, as we've seen it just now, there's another way you can draw an NAND gate. If you take I can hear you all the way here. All right. If we take um, the Morgan's theorem and we apply it um, to the NAND gate, this is just the definition of an NAND, then using the Morgan's, we know that um, this will be equivalent um, to an NAND as well. So if we go from this, which was the symbol for an NAND gate, an alternative way to draw it will be using an OR gate with both of its inputs inverted. So again, just like before, those those bubbles at the, um, at the inputs to the OR gate means we're going to invert the inputs before they go in. And this is just another way to, um, to draw an NAND gate. If you do see this kind of structure, you immediately should think NAND, not OR with two inputs inverted. This is just an NAND gate. Now, we will um, do a lot of um, work with NAND gates, um, and sometimes it will appear in this form. And sometimes we will need to um, convert from this form to this form. The easiest way to remember to go from here to here is what we call push the bubble. So you have this inverting bubble at the output there. And you can imagine you pressing at the bubble. It goes into the gate and then pops out at the outputs. Um, sorry, the inputs to the gate while replacing the gate to an OR gate, to the opposite. Um, now, this trick, by the way, works even if you have more than two inputs um, to the NAND. You can have a three, four input NAND gate. So we might have something like this. And then when you convert it to its, um, this representation while not replacing the actual functionality, you will end up with four bubbles. Um, in, to an OR gate. Again, we didn't change um, the functionality. This is a four input NAND gate as well. Now, why do we even talk about NAND gates? Well, it turns out, and you will see why when we talk about CMOS technology in week 12, 
that NAND gate is the actual natural implementation for gates um, in CMOS technology, which is the technology being used mostly today for chips. Um, it is the smallest gate um, and the fastest gate you can actually implement on a chip. Um, and this is why it's being used most. And it's also a universal gate. A universal gate means that we can use just NAND gates to pretty much implement any circuit that we want. Now, um, why, why is this the case and how do we do this? Well, if I can prove to you that using NAND gates only, I can come up with the three uh, fundamental logic gates, which are the AND, the OR, and the inverter, and I can replace any of those three with some combination of NAND gates, that will show that you essentially can implement any Boolean function with NAND gates. Just replace anywhere that you have an OR with the equivalent NAND implementation and similarly um, the ENDs and the inverters. Now, um, this statement here that an NAND gate is a universal gate um, is something that we will use quite a lot. In next week's lecture, we will actually see how we convert um, graphically um, circuits are given with using uh, the natural gates of AND, OR, and inverter into NAND gates in a very easy, um, easy way. So this is to show you that we can implement the three um, fundamental gates using NAND gates. So for example, if you wanted to implement an inverter, and um, I had only NAND gates with two inputs at my disposal, I would take the NAND gate tie its two inputs together and connect it to the input signal, what will happen is essentially we will have x and x, uh, the two inputs, and then the inverting bubble will invert it. x and x will just give us x, and then this will just be equivalent to an inverter. Now, it sort of makes sense that if you go through um, if you wanted to implement an AND gate, then, and you only have NAND gates, you take an AND gate, and then you just invert the output back. Now, this inverter can be implemented using another NAND gate, as we've just seen. Um, and then, the, you know, if you want to put in a Boolean um, algebra notation, then you just take the um, XY inverted, you invert it again, and then you just back with your um, natural AND gate. With an OR gate, we know through the Morgan's theorem, and here um, the X and the Y are separated. In fact, it's going to be X, Y, each one of them inverted, where these two inverters are implemented using NAND gates. Um, and then using the Morgan, we can show that this just become um, a OR, function, uh, OR gate. So now that we know how to implement those three, any function that we can implement, just replace it with one of those structures in the um, right gate, and we'll get um, the function with an end on the implementation. Again, I told you next week we will see how, instead of remembering those structures, you can start off with a circuit that has um, inverters and then ORs, and how do we actually simplify it um, very easily to an end only implementation. Um, questions so far? Yeah. Here? In the same um, way, we introduce a NOR gate, which is an OR gate with the output inverted. So we take the regular OR gate with the inversion bubble. And just like before, when we talked about the uh, NAND gate, the NOR gate will just be the inverse of a regular OR function. So our regular OR function is X or Y. Um, sorry. Where um, when at least one of the inputs is 1, that the output is 1. Then in the NOR gate, whenever there's at least um, one, of 1, 1, the output will be zero and only be one when the two inputs are actual zero. Um, and, and NOR gates can be extended into um, 
more inputs. It doesn't necessarily have to have only two inputs. It'll be true for as many inputs as you want. And on the same um, logic that I've done with the NAND gate, you can prove that NOR gate is another type of universal gate. You could use NOR only implementations to implement anything you want. I want to actually show you how uh, we derive the three um, um, logic gates from it. Um, it should be fairly straightforward. Now with um, CMOS technology, what I said before that we use NAND gates as the natural choice um, for gate implementation, then um, we could have done the same thing with NOR. Uh, now in terms of number of transistors, you would probably end up with the same number of transistors. But if you try to implement using NOR gates, it turns out that the transistors themselves are larger than transistors used for NAND gates. And we won't get into how you size transistors, but uh, this is the fact. So between, if we had a choice between NOR and NAND, we would, we would usually go with the NAND implementation rather than the NOR because the NOR will take up more space, more power, and so on. But it is possible to implement um, things using NOR-only implementations. Um, now just on that note that um, universal gates, someone asked me yesterday um, why couldn't an end gate or an OR gate be a universal gate? Why, why do we go into the NAND and the NORs? And if you think about it, if you, sorry? How are you going to get an inverter? Yeah, that's a problem. If you think about, if you wanted to have, say, an OR only implementation, there's no way for you to invert a signal. And this is one of the fundamental um, gates that we need to implement. No matter how much you try to play with um, the inputs or whatever tricks you'll um, try to come up with, um, there's no way you can have X coming on one side and not X coming on the other side. And this is true for an AND gate as well. Although we could do it with NANDs and NORs, so um, that's the reason there. Um, same logic as before, we can take our NOR gate and express it using um, the Morgan manipulation as, a, um, as something involving an end gate and then we'll go from a NOR into something that looks like this which is a NOR gate as well only using an end in its core. And once again, this is what we do, push the bubble, we press the bubble on one side, then the gate type changes and the bubble pops out on the other side. Um, and vice versa, by the way, if you see something like this, then you can push the bubbles in and um, pop one bubble on the other side and this will keep the same gate type. What you have to be really careful about though, if you see something that looks, say, like this. So you only have few of the inputs um, inverted, but not all of them. In that case, you couldn't do um, that sort of trick. You couldn't uh, push some of the bubbles and then pop you know, two thirds of a bubble at the outside. It doesn't work that way. Um, we do deal with those kind of cases by introducing um, fake inverters at the inputs. Um, and then essentially we have three bubbles, but we have to take care of this and these are the kind of stuff that we will do next week um, when we talk, how do we do these things graphically. Questions so far? Simple enough? Great. Now another gate type that um, we will use quite extensively is an exclusive OR. Exclusive OR looks like an OR gate, but has this extra um, arc over there to denote that it's an exclusive OR. The definition of an exclusive OR is that one of the outputs is one, but not both. So either X is one, Y one, but not both. If both of them are zeros or both of them are ones, we will get zero at the output. That's why it's called an exclusive OR. 
And you can see the truth table uh, for that here. So the combination of 0, 0 and 1, 1 will produce it. a 0 at the output. And if at least one of them is 1, or at most one of them is, is 1, we'll get a 1. The notation we have for an exclusive OR, so it's a new um, notation. It's going to be something that looks like an OR with a circle around it. And by definition, and, and this is how we define an exclusive OR, is this expression here. So x not y or not xy. Now if you look at this expression for a bit, you can, you can see that um, it implies you can see it implies that this will be true either when, zero, um, when x is 1, y is 0, or when x is 0, y is 1, and not at any other time, which agrees with those two combinations, um, but it zeroes out for the other combinations. Now, if you look at this and you think, okay, can I simplify this expression even further, then then you couldn't um, simplify it even further. You can have a look at the corner map. Are you serious enough? Shh. If you look at the corner map implementation, and I will put my x and y's, then this will have the one when we either have the 0, 1 combinations or the 0, 1 here. And there's no easy way to group them together. Y if you wanted to um, simplify it, then the most you can do is actually um, group each one of them separately. So this is definition and this is how it stays. Um, on the same logic, the exclusive NOR gate. So you take an exclusive OR and you invert the output. The notation um, is just an exclusive OR with a bar over it. And the truth table is just inverted. So either when both of them are 0 or when both of them are 1, but not when um, they are different from each other. <coughs> 